it obviously only really works if you know your interview is later on in the day I'd yeah. advise that but I think it was like four o'clock and so I I happened to when I was you know working out a long time ago um, don't laugh too much so no comment <laughs> no comment um, but it definitely does boost your your confidence yeah um, you know so again you know that can take a lot of stress out because you know someone like myself I'd always stress overnight maybe not sleep that well and things like that so that's definitely something that most people would never really think of <laughs> You're obviously going to cut everything as well. Yes. So most things. Um, what are we talking about again? We're talking about interview. Uh, Coming oh, your, calm your interview nerves. jitters. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I say probably the biggest thing for me would be preparing for your interview. It sounds like an obvious one. Yeah. But I think the more you prepare, the less nervous you'll be. Yeah. So yeah. I agree. I agree with that to a certain extent. I feel like you're always gonna have nerves, regardless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because you never, you don't know the type of person you're meeting, so you just always got, you just got to be yourself, sort of, sort of thing. Yeah. Right. yeah. For me, I feel like you, you control the controllables, right? So you, the things that you can control, being there on time, you know, having your preparation done, your research, you know, these are things that you know only you can control, and ultimately, if you do those, you're doing everything that you can do. An interview is always a two-way process, you know, I think it's important that, that people don't get too stressed about kind of what the company's looking for, although yeah. that's very, very important. I think it's important to come prepared and know what you're looking for. Mm. Um, and sometimes you're having that confidence and, you know, being well prepared can make the difference actually between two candidates. No, 100%. So how would you go about making sure obviously you've got enough time and you're prepared to get there on time? Sure. So I think, you know, we play a big part in that, you know, that's part of what we do is to help provide that information and that reassurance and that preparation. Yeah. So, you know, that's certainly something that, that we deliver, but ultimately, you know, interviews are going to be things that you're going to have to do throughout your career. Yeah. And so setting aside time to prepare, just like you would with anything work related, whether it's a meeting or even outside of work, you know, if you promised your girlfriend you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna go to a, a restaurant on Saturday night, you know, you make sure you've planned it, booked it and all of that to say you'll be trouble. Looking like an <laughs> idiot, exactly. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think yeah, that would be my main advice. Control the controllables. Yeah. I think one thing that I always did was plan your outfit for the, the, the day before basically oh, I've never done that. you never done that no. I, I would always I do that for work now just a, a normal day but, it's clear. but for <laughs> an interview thank you um, for an interview I think I have to because the last thing I want to be worrying about is you know is it ironed enough you know have I got shoes and they look you know clean enough and mm. um, that's the last thing you want to be worrying about so I always do that usually mm. even maybe more than a night before but have it ready so that's definitely a big thing yeah. for me and check with the recruiter, check with the HR person at the company, what is the formal attire, what, do you, what are they expecting you to wear an interview? Yeah. I always think dress to impress. Yeah. 100%. I Again, agree. like it's a date. I don't want to overuse the dating analogy, <laughs> yeah. but if you want to make a good impression, then there's your chance. Yeah. Um, but obviously we live in a world now, it's you know, the 21st century, not every business is expecting you to walk in looking like you know, James Bond with a tuxedo on. Um, so I think it's just about understanding the culture of the, the company that you're hoping to work for mm. um, and doing everything that you can to set that example and show that you, you want to fit that culture. Yeah, yeah. And I think another thing as well is obviously going back to preparing, looking at the, the address and the route, knowing exactly where you're going, right? But if you can see it takes an hour, then give yourself an hour and a half. Yeah, you know. Sure. Because the worst thing to do is to turn up late. Really. What do you consider late in an interview? Anything less than five minutes before. Yeah. I think yeah, if no, you're bang on time for an interview, I think you're still late. Yeah, I think no, it should definitely. be five minutes at least. At least that's at least. At least, least yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that would be that. Yeah. Yeah. Give yourself time to kind of size up the area, grab a coffee, mm. 
you'd be amazed how much a coffee can calm your interview jitters just yeah. just alone. <laughs> and also looking at the environment that you potentially be working in as well. To be fair, you want to see how other people work. More like online, do you mean? No, just in the office, really. Because more time you go to an interview, you go to the office. Yeah. You see how everybody is. You see how everybody works. You see the sort of type, the type of people that you'd be working with as well. So yeah, yeah, man, it's just a good way to analyze things. Have you ever done a workout before an interview? A workout? No, yeah. no, 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 I haven't. Yeah, Is that something you advised? I I did it not for this job, but for my last job actually. Oh. Um, genuinely, I uh, it was obviously it only really works if you know your interview later on in the day. Yeah. I'd advise that, but I think it was like four o'clock, and so I I happened to when I was you know working out a long time ago. Um, don't laugh too much. So no comment. <laughs> no comment. Um, but it definitely does boost your your confidence. Yeah. Um, you know. So again, you know that can take a lot of stress out because you know someone like myself, I'd always stress overnight, maybe not sleep that well, and things like that. So that's definitely something that most people would never really think of. But um, why not if it works? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it's important to remember that there's no set way to to prepare. Everybody's different. different, different, yeah. different yeah. And every every role's different, you know, and every company expects a different amount of preparation. But for me, I think my biggest bit of advice was if you've got jitters, then that's a good thing. Mm. Yeah. Because it shows that you care. Yeah, shows that you care. I yeah. think if if you ever want anything in life there's gonna be a little bit of trepidation, a little bit of nerves going into it. But that's part of human nature and yeah. you know the human human being will will often rise to the challenge. And I think as well, always being honest about your nervousness as well. You know, the first thing is just sort of don't beat around the bush and call the, the, I suppose, the nervous elephant in the room, so to speak. (laughs) You know, like just sit down and when they say, how are you, how's your journey, how are you feeling? It's Mm. got to be honest, I'm I'm feeling quite nervous. I've been looking forward to this, you know. I think when someone does that, it sort of breaks that initial tension. I can address it straight away, so that's definitely something I'd do as well. Sure. Bosh. Overthink it, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I think man. that's important. You know, one bit of advice I'd always give, especially for a technical job, where there are going to be certain things that might be discussed um, that you might have had to do a little bit of research or revision on. Often you'll get that on like the job description. Mm. So I always think, you know, even having that on your phone, obviously remembering to turn your phone off before yeah. you enter the <laughs> yeah. interview. Yeah. Um, but read through that because ultimately they're there to talk to you about this job, right? And 90% of what you're going to have to talk about is your suitability for that position. Um, so I think just going in there and kind of that last minute preparation of looking through the job description and making sure you're prepared for what they could ask you about that particular subject. Yeah, I think as well, take a notepad. Yep. With questions, obviously, you know, you should have prepared before, right? So a part of that is preparing questions that you have. So if you have your notepad and your pen, you look prepared. So at least, you know, you can go in and you don't have to remember everything off the top of your head. Yeah. One well. thing for me, yeah, you see when you go into an interview and they ask you, you've got questions at the end, What's a reasonable amount of questions to have? Um, I think certainly at least one. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean if, if they <laughs> ask that question and you <laughs> stare at them, that's probably not gonna, gonna work. Yeah. But, you know, I think, again, it, it, it depends. I think the most important thing is that the questions you've got are important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's the reason you're there. And, and interviews take time out of your day, sometimes money out of your pocket. And so, you know, just remember the reasons why you're there. And, you know, if you want it, believe in yourself because mm-hmm. you can have it. Yeah. And I've had it when, when people in an interview literally have 20 questions all on a pad. Yeah. And I, I personally, I love that. I don't see anything wrong with that. So, to answer your question, for me personally, there probably is an amount, unless they're silly questions that they could have just, you know, researched online, for yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd say err on the side of more questions than no questions. I think I've always liked to have like a, a glass of water. And, you know, if they offer you usually water or tea or coffee, you know, I'm not even really a big tea or coffee person, but I'd always accept that. 
one, yeah. you know, politeness. politeness, two, it gives you that split second to think about an answer. So if someone asks you something and you're, you're, you see where the question's going, but you're, you're thinking, okay, I've got to think of an answer for this and it's not right up there, you have that second to sort of drink, think about it. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, thinking about a question for a couple of seconds. You don't have to straight away have an answer off the top of your head. You want to show that you, you listen to the question, you thought about the question yeah. and your answer, and then that's it. Yeah. Sometimes I can having a drink and just sort of make that process a little bit easier. Yeah, definitely. I think you're build, building relationships at that point, right? So you know, all those important things around you know, maintaining eye contact as much as you can, um, you know, a strong, firm handshake, <laughs> I think always makes a, a, a good deal towards kind of getting where you want to be. It shows yeah. your authority, it shows that, that you're happy to be there and that you want to impress. Yeah. Um, do you lot sometimes use PEE in your like, interview process? Point evidence explained. But, <laughs> but. I think it's important to be succinct with your answers to questions. Um, I suppose it's important also to remember that interviews can be free flowing. Mm. So sometimes it's hard to prepare answers for everything. But I think, yeah, where you can, you should be able to give reasons for your answers and point to examples on your CV. So, for example, if the manager says, you know, I've read this on your CV, you've mentioned that you've done this, they want you to go into a little bit more detail about that. What they don't want is for you to reread what you've written yeah. on the CV if it's quite vague. I think they'll want to see real world examples of where you've had success and you know where you can showcase that you can add that value to their company. So you know it's interesting like you know interviews can be different, right? You know some interviewers will be more relaxed than others, some will be quite intense by the nature of employment, you know they want to make sure they're making the right choice. Mm. And you know some people react differently to those different situations. So how would you advise somebody who maybe prefers a relaxed interview? Um, and arrives at the first stage and, and it's quite an intense situation. I think it depends. I think one thing I'd say is never take it personally. Yeah, uh, you know, some, some people like to interview with that poker face and they don't want to give anything away. Mm. Um, and more often than not, it's nothing to do with you. You know, that they'll be like that regardless whoever turns up. And um, that's just their style. So to so don't sit there thinking they're not giving much away, they're not cracking a smile or laughing, they hate me, I'm saying the wrong things. Mm-hmm. I've got to think of how many people they're interviewing within, yeah. let's just say a day, for yeah. furthermore. Like, say, oh, it's just weird, yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't know what to say. I, I've had it with, with people where they come out of interviews and they say, like, they're oh God, they, I think they went really, really badly, they can't tell, they gave nothing away, but you know, then the actual feedback will come and, and they did really well. That's just that person mm. um, and their style. So I'd say definitely just don't sit there thinking you've done absolutely awful. I'll take um, yeah, and, and just sort of stick to obviously your preparation, your answers. Again, I suppose sometimes there might be that uncomfortable silence mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. It's easier said than done, but try not to waffle on and feel that silence. Try and get used to... Um, you know, being comfortable in that silence. Sometimes being uncomfortable is a good thing, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, in a way, I wouldn't say all the time, but yeah. In an interview, I think it's it's to sort of expect that, mm. and um, maybe even practice with someone mm. and, and get used to. Because the idea of an interview itself just sounds uncomfortable until you've met the person, and then you realise the person is actually quite nice and you can speak to them. But and that's probably another yeah. thing: changing the word and instead of calling it an interview, maybe a conversation. Yeah. Obviously, still be formal and and do everything you would in an interview but almost call it a conversation in your head so you know you're just going and, and speaking to someone about you know the job that you do already you yeah. just want to do it for them essentially absolutely um, yeah. and again that's where we can come in that's where we can add value because you know we know the companies that that we're helping you to get interviews mm. with so you know ask us about culture we'll certainly be doing everything that we can to help you be as prepared as possible yeah um, but we work with businesses, I know I do, that have both of those styles. Yeah. Um, and so I think it comes down to what you as a candidate want. And, you know, an interview is always a chance for you to test that um, and as well as them to test you. So, you know, I think don't 
don't be surprised with anything. Go in with an open mind and you know use it as a learning opportunity more than anything. Yeah, and definitely ask if you have a recruiter for that particular position. Definitely ask them for what the style of that interview mm. probably will be because yeah. then at least you're going into it and you sort of know what to expect. Yeah, nine times out of ten we would have had candidates have that same stage mm. process before so you know naturally we'll be able to kind of give you a heads up. Yeah, so you relax, you know, it's just going to be a conversation, it's, it's um, you know, they're a nice person, they're really easy to get along with, that type of thing or on the other side, you know, just be prepared for loads of questions and, and sort of you know being bombarded with with uh, questions about you know what you've done before as well mm. yeah if you like me as a person then you take me on not to say that I do stupid stuff in an interview but <laughs> yeah I just feel like just be you yourself, be yourself. Sure. definitely don't, be don't yourself don't. a question to ask at the end of the interview is when can you expect feedback yeah. you know it's never a question that you shouldn't ask um, and just see what they say and they'll either give you an exact sort of amount of days or a week or we have other interviews but at least that might give you some bearing on how you've done and then again if you have a recruiter you can give them that feedback and they'll typically from previous processes know what that kind of means and then they can then chase the feedback for you because at the end of the day you've done your part all you have to do is wait yeah Absolutely. I think it's about managing expectations as well. So, you know, they're going to want to know as much about your situation and when they can expect feedback from you as a candidate. In fact, that's what I would say more than 50% of the companies I work with in Switzerland do is when that interview finishes, mm. they actually say, take some time to think about it. Yeah. Let us know by Thursday, for example, yeah. and send us an email if mm. you're that's, interested. That's a good that's one. A good one. So it's, um, yeah, I think each company has their own processes, but always I would say definitely do what you said, James. You know, ask for the next stage of the process. Mm. Ask for waiting time so that you can plan and prepare your search around that because hopefully it's not going to be your only interview in, in that week or that month. Mm. So it's important for you to understand timelines and, and, and work around that. Yep, agreed. I think having a... Like having a breakfast and that even that just makes yeah to be good. fair yeah, yeah just yeah. eating breakfast actually yeah. so you let me put my phone you don't feel your belly's not rumbling yeah. and it's quite embarrassing. probably make sure you don't have a curry the night before why because well for obvious reasons yes man what's the obvious reason well you don't want to be stinking out with the interview <laughs> do you <laughs> <laughs> <I'm a little laughs> um, but yeah if you're driving as well ask if they have parking for you so you don't have to worry about parking restrictions and maybe getting a fine if you're there too long and having to leave and things like that as well Malik like, do you want to go through some breathing techniques? no man no? No, no. <laughs> if you're interested in more career advice hiring tips or the latest updates in the tech world make sure you subscribe and like the video <laughs>